And good morning, it's Fiona here from Core Confidence. A welcome to another one of our Facebook Live sessions. And I'm hoping that Kate will join me at some time in the next couple of minutes. Uh, today we're gonna to be talking to you about accessing our multiple intelligences. And this is a subject I'm really passionate about. Um, we, you know, over the years we've found that um, people tend to focus on one intelligence more than the others and we're, we're kind of missing out on some really valuable um, insight. Hi Kate. I'm out to join me. Hey, there you are. I was going to say, Great. Oh. <laughs> how are you going? <laughs> Good, I'm well this morning. How are you? Good, one of our favourite topics today, multiple intelligences. Yeah, I just started saying that it, it's something we're both really passionate about and both have done a lot of work on over the years and found really, really invaluable actually in our careers and work. So I think to start off, you know, we're, we're kind of why is this important? What, what do we think is going on? And one of the things we notice is that in the workplace particularly, we're very, very hooked into intellectual and um, our cognitive intelligence and what our brain tells us. And while that's really valuable, it's really useful, we're often missing out on a lot of intel and data from the other intelligences. And it's no surprise that this is the case because from the time we go to school and if we do any further education and, as I said, in the workplace, the thing that tends to get recognised and talked about and rewarded is our cognitive and kind of rational intelligence. So it's no surprise that we're biased towards relying on that, but sometimes we're so oriented towards that we're missing out a bit. Yeah, look, I think this whole, um, this whole thing of, you know, we learn uh, at school, education always teaches us that it is all about the mind or the brain. You know, go and rote learn this, sit down and um, spend three hours doing a test and remember what you learned. Um, and if you do that well, you'll get good marks and you'll go to university and then we go to uni and we do the same thing almost. And so our, our strategy for success on some level is study um, and really leverage this. Um, and, and what we're taught is to leverage, you know, the brain. And, and it's not that that's not important. Um, you know, you and I are almost obsessed with how do we leverage the brain? How do we get it um, functioning and, and operating at a level where we can actually access some of the, even the deeper parts that we don't act as access on a conscious space? But how do we actually, you know, access the, the other parts that work in with that part? So, you know, that the the other parts of the body that can give us, give us information, ones that we're not taught about at school, which is the irony of the whole thing. It's almost yes. like we're kind of walking lopsided because we're not actually taught about how to leverage these. And, you know, just last weekend, I was doing um, the Accelerate Intensive for um, a whole group of women in our leadership program. And we spent a lot of time talking about this whole, um, you know, heart and body intelligence and that it's so easy to get caught up in the brain and almost and the mind. And we could pro and con on some level, anything, anything. Um, I've got one client, you've got two really good job opportunities on the table. And I said to her, they're both really good decisions here. Like both of them are good options. And sitting and trying to make the decision with your mind is there's no, there's a no win there. And so how do we use your body? How do we use other intelligences to help you gather information to make a really good decision for you? Yes, I think this is the, the key is it's not an either or. We're not at all saying uh, don't use your mind because it's brilliant. Like our, our brains are full of great uh, knowledge and, and, you know, experience and we absolutely want to be able to tap into that. And I think what we're offering here is there's a whole and. There's this whole rich realm that actually kids are really good at doing. We're, we're naturally born with this um, and we, we have these. And it's almost like they get forgotten or pushed to the side through that, you know, education process and, and through life and through other people reinforcing how important it is to have a kind of a, a intellectual solution or a rational solution or that sort of thing. And so we, 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 start, we start to think, that, well, that's the way I have to make decisions. I have to pro and con everything. Um, and sometimes we don't stop enough to actually slow down and just really get what it is that our, that our body and our other intelligences are, te are teaching us and, in, and indicating is available to us. So I think if we start to um, 
recognize those and be more attuned to them, we've got so much more data, so much more um, intel to work from. And, and, you know, as a kind of simple shortcut in the book, we talk about the three other intelligences that we like to focus on. And, of course, one we start with is the hard intelligence. And this is something that we all kind of know about. You know, it's, it's that emotional intelligence. You know, we often hear about IQ is, you know, our intellect and then emotional intelligence. And this is this human-centred piece. It's very much um, available in the dynamics between people. It's a lot about empathy. It's about vulnerability and connection and it's about really sensing into what's actually going on beneath the surface what's what's happening here and how am I responding what are my feelings telling me as well as what my um, intellect's telling me and just really being attuned to that just getting back in touch with that feeling sense yeah I mean the we talk a lot about the subconscious communicates um, through feelings so feelings emotions and um, and symbols so that whole piece of Really, and I think this can be really difficult for people to distinguish. Um, and one of the tips I, I give clients is, you know, think about, um, you know, when you go into your heart and actually just putting your hand on your heart is a really good way to do that and to centre your attention there. But to go into your heart and then really connect in with the emotion and then almost visualise, are you leaning in? Are you leaning away? Are you contracting? Are you expanding? Like what's the... What symbol, if you think about the picture and you think about that subject, what's going on that can help you interpret your feelings? Because sometimes on the tricky ones, there's times when it's easy, but sometimes in the tricky ones, it can feel really great and it can be hard to trust. It can be hard to trust it. And I think, you know, you and I have both learned over time, how do I build that feedback loop between what my, you know, my heart intelligence is telling me and, um, or what some of the others, and often it's a collective piece. It's not necessarily yes. it's yeah. the heart, not the gut. Often it's, it's kind of those together. Um, we're getting something, but it feels particularly when it's counterintuitive, particularly when the message we're getting does not add up with the paper pro and con list. So when we do a pro and con list or we look at the facts, the facts tell us, yes, I should go forward. But when we connect in to what the right answer is, we might get a really strong no, that there's something here that doesn't add up. And so it, it can be difficult acting on that when you can't rationalise, you know, the difference or the discrepancy between those two bits of information. Yeah, I think you made a couple of really good points. And one of the things that we do want to say is that all of these intelligences are working in concert. They're like a beautiful symphony and they're all available at all, all times and they don't preclude each other they're actually working in unison so as Kate said there's a there's a gut intelligence and that's more that intuitive sense it's almost like that um first little there's a little spark or a little bit of noticing or a bit of knowledge that you couldn't put down to anything rational it almost comes to you in an instant and you do you're you're conscious of it and as Kate said sometimes it can almost seem like oh that doesn't line up with the other data and information I have so I almost want to push it away because there's some dissonance and the dissonance feels uncomfortable and what we've learned and what we encourage um, people we coach and, and in the courses to do is to really go ah isn't that interesting I'm I'm having a different reaction than I would intellectually think I was going to have and oh there's something to learn from this and just kind of get curious and interested what, what could that be? What might be going on? And the more we listen to that, the louder and clearer it becomes. So I think it's, it's like all of these um, strategies and ideas. It's about practice. It's slowing down enough to actually listen and do and, and connect in to what might be available that we're currently missing. And the other one we talk about is the body intelligence. And this is really a physical thing. And, and what we do know about this is that the body responds to stimuli about 12 times faster than the brain so often we'll get a very quick um, body reaction to something and again we've learned to dismiss it we've learned to not listen to it so it's it can be difficult initially to go oh okay something's happened and, and the way I notice it sometimes is I'll get a strange pain like I might get an immediate little pain and sometimes it's at the back of my neck sometimes it'll be closer to the heart Sometimes there's a, a tingling sensation in my body and I, I just know that something's up or I just need to pay more attention. And the other one that, that can happen is um, sweaty palms. You might notice that, oh, um, and these are not like there's, you know, there would be thousands probably um, of different 
indicators. And again, as Kate said, it can be tricky to, to know well, what is that. But the more you listen, the more you notice, the more useful it becomes. Yeah, and I think that's the key point. You know, a lot of people will say, well, how do I build this? Um, and, you know, I'm quite open. I've spent six years working with an intuitive coach to actually start to build up um, my feedback loop, but really my skills and most importantly, my ability to trust the information that's coming through um, so that then I can make decisions um, on that. So I think, I think it's really about starting to dial up your attention uh, and, and paying attention, not just to the cognitive or the mind or the brain, but then starting to pay attention to the body, to pay attention to the gut, gut instincts, to, to listen to the heart. So to actually go, oh, I've got more than just the one source. I've got three other um, sources of information and just starting to observe, um, which often, you know, our, our theme for this month is mindfulness. And it's often about being very present and being in the moment and not judging what's coming through, being really open. And I think, you know, it, it does require the ability just to be and there's patience in that, which I think is the most important piece there. Patience. And then it's trust. And it's, as I said before, building up that feedback loop um, and start on the little things. You know, we're not necessarily, um, you know, the first big decision you make on some of these other intelligences you haven't used for a while isn't going to be whether to buy a house or take a new job. Uh, it might just be a small thing. You know, when I first started, um, my coach said, you know, start practicing on um, parking. So car parks in shopping centers or, you know, little things like, um, uh, geography or you know should I turn right here that does not work for me um, who's very directionally <laughs> challenged uh, but you know practice on the little things perhaps it's when you meet someone or you know various different things start small and and um, build your way up to being able to leverage these multiple intelligences uh, for making decisions yeah I, I think that's a great piece of advice is you know Patience and trust are absolutely key. And then just taking the time to build the skill. It's like any muscle. It, you know, it doesn't happen by one little session. Okay, now it's done. It really is over time. Let's keep going. Let's keep trying and, and working with that. And actually, as you say that, Kate, it reminds me of an um, incident that happened yesterday. And I, I was at an um, International Women's Day lunch and it was lovely. And I was sitting next to a woman who I don't know well. We've met once before. And she started to tell me some of the... Um, challenges she was having in her new role. She's got a senior role, um, but she's moved from a very large global organisation into a smaller, more boutique one. And she was just noticing some of the challenges she's having. And while I was listening to her, um, I can now in reflection say I wasn't conscious of it at the time, but I was actually noticing what her face was doing, what her body was doing, how she was interacting with me and where she was going. And I was actually able to offer some feedback about dynamics and what was important, that sort of thing, that was so spot on. And she was just looking at me like, how could you, like I've said, you know, um, only a couple of sentences and you've tuned in exactly to what's going on. And not only that, you're giving me some really useful feedback. And I think that's a, you know, live example of when you've been doing this for a long time, you're, you are relying on their, all of the signals they're giving you and then how that's landing on your body and what you're noticing and, oh, yes, that feels like this and I've experienced that before and I know that so I can actually offer something valuable back. And I'm not offering it prescriptively. It's more like, oh, that sounds as though it could be. I'm not. And it, so it's just one of those things that it's incredibly valuable the more you do it and there are endless opportunities to practice and learn how to do this better and better. Yeah, and I think... You know, the more that if, if we think about, you know, how does it fit, this fit within the subject of confidence, the more that you can take information from within. So the more that you can leverage these intelligences to gather information, um, to inform decisions, to uh, contribute to conversations, to ask good questions, perhaps when something feels like, you know, there's something in the room, but we're not talking about it. If we can use all these bits of information and build up the feedback loop so we can trust it and then we can start to move with these active acts of confidence you know so that actually we can rely on ourselves more what's within us and the information we're getting and what's coming through so that we can you know be clear about what we want we can set goals and even when it feels scary we can take action that we can actually know you know what is our true authenticity what is our truth so we can communicate and speak that truth. So I think 
you know, this piece fits into a, a bunch of, of, of the other chapters around how do I actually uh, get information? How do I make decisions? How do I step into fear um, and act anyway and really leverage, you know, leverage the opportunities that are available to us? As we say all the time, um, the beautiful thing about confidence is, you know, it, it shows up every day. So we have an opportunity every day. And with this one particularly, um, you know, with this opportunity of, of connecting in with our intelligences and leveraging that, every day there will be at least one opportunity for you to start to practice tuning. Um, and then when you're ready, remember we talk about the act of confidence comes before the feeling of confidence. So, you know, it might be initially you're playing and practicing with things. Maybe, um, you know, when you're even not making the decision, but really leveraging the multiple intelligences to gather information to see what decision you would make. Or perhaps, you know, with the little decisions, as we said, um, but over time, the more that you can connect uh, and use the information and trust the information, the more that we can actually leverage this to really make good decision decisions and propel yourself into those acts of confidence. Definitely. I, I think there's so much richness in this one, plenty to practice. Um, as Kate said, it's really trusting that and just being a little bit patient, practicing, practice on the small things um, and get feedback from people. You know, if you are, if you're intuiting something, if you're thinking something might be going on beyond what you can rationally think, you can check in with someone you know quite well. You can go, look, I'm just getting this um, feeling about something. Can I just test it on you? And just, you know, have a bit of fun, play with it, practice. Yeah. Um, at, <laughs> I think that's probably enough on that one for today, Kate. And as we um, close off, just remember that core confidence is within you. You have it no matter what. And it is one of these things that the more we practice, the more comfortable we get with it. In terms of core, um, learning more about core confidence, please go to the website. You can download a chapter of the book if you haven't already. Uh, you can buy the book from the website. And we'd love you to share this video. Awesome. And Thanks, Bea. Have a great week. Bye. See you guys.